greatest confidence is before the culmination. But most people enter into the confidence and the harvest limping, hurting, beat, and it's a relief. The confidence and the, and the delivery doesn't come because you can enjoy the victory. It's so that you can do something with the answer. The answer is always a seed. So when the temple was destroyed by God, because that's what he said, because he said, I'll put you there for 70 years, but this season in, I'll bless it. So in our New Testament experience, Peter's told that I have plans for you, but he didn't do it. And as God proclaimed his faith and plans, he didn't activate that. We don't activate that. But now you have to learn that I have to activate what actually I know God is doing in me to proclaim my faith in the plan of God. So these verses cannot be slogans. They have got to be seeds and actions. So what about being close enough to hear? Joshua was close enough to hear, and I'm not going to give you a Bible lesson because you're all scholars. He heard Moses speaking to God on the mountain in the tent of meeting. So the tent of meeting, you get all happy about that and jump around here and go around, but it was a place where God went in and, and, and the holies of holies and, the, and, and, and Joshua was there to protect him and he was close enough to hear what was going on between, Shakotaba, coming between God and man. My wife used to say, God, why is he arguing with you so much? And the Lord finally told her, said, don't you know, daughter, the man that wrestles God always wins. Why do we win? So when you told me that, I said, well, I can tell you the answer to that. Why do we win? We win because we wear out and we submit. Probably not the truth, but that's what I said. But God gave her peace with my contending for the miracles that were, get, were in my life and, and, and why I couldn't get that tent of meeting. And, and, and people would hang around in the anointing to, to wait, and I was ignorant because I didn't teach other people to hear the voice of the Lord. But you have to be close enough to hear. When Moses went on about his duties, Joshua stayed in the atmosphere. To do what he would do in later life, he stayed in the atmosphere, that hunger to hear for God. And in that presence, what was he doing? He was living in the memory of what had just occurred. Oh my God. Leaders, hear what I'm saying. Let people hear you hurt in the presence of the Lord. Let them hear you free, plead the blood. Let them hear you intercede. Don't just let them hear you in the glory. Let them know that you weep, you care, you think, you know, you love, you pray, you seek, and that at times things are just horrible and my habitat is a pit of misery. But I'm going through because he is God. Now, if you're a big sad sack and all you do is whine, then we just don't need you anyway on that deal, so you just forget that I said that and go on and quote, quote your religious slogan. He goes like this. How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm blessed. I look at him like, mm, learned slogan, demon dogma. They took what a man said back years ago that was really blessed, <laughs> and they thought if they said it, it worked. But it don't say it unless you're blessed because you're blessed to fight. You're blessed to take territory. You're blessed to have struggle. You're blessed to survive in the pit. We can all survive when it's doing great. It takes a manager to survive. Oh, my, I'm not yeah. So what did he learn from that? Well, let's just go to the life of Samuel to learn the same lessons. See, in the tents of the meeting at Shiloh, which remains to this day, out of the rock was hewn the place of the tabernacle and its supporting tents. And Samuel was raised in the very tabernacle that Joshua heard God and Moses. So there's a consistency here of going to people and going to places where people seek God and serve God and, and, and talk about prayer. So let's go to 1 Samuel 3 and 13, and then we're going to just do. Oh, my God. This time just went. 
I'm sorry, guys. I, I, it just went like that. I, I, I want to be a Yoder as bad as you do, but let's just get it done. See, in Samuel 3 and 13, he said, I've warned him that his judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So to save time, I'll just tell you, you know what that was happening there? The next scripture, let's just it says in the King James, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. So just take chapter 3 and put it in your, in your, in your prayer time uh, and, and just study it. Because the Bible says there was no open vision. There was no, there was, the word of the Lord was rare. So let me just tell you about the ear. The ear has 35,000 follicles to hear. I know because recently I, I lost a portion of my hearing and I had to, I had to get, get right because I got to listen to you on the telephone and I was just not getting it right and uh, just not hearing what you were saying. And 35,000 follicles, as they go away with time, you can't hear. Now through a cochlear implant, they can put eight man-made follicles in your ear and you, you can, even though you're deaf, completely deaf, you can hear perfectly. What I'm worrying about in that, if this season we're in where the Word of the Lord is rare, we have lost the ability to hear the wind in the mulberry bush. We've lost the ability to talk to God and to trust how to write before the Lord or type before the Lord or, or click before the Lord. We've lost that We've lost that timing. So we would rather strip our ears of the natural follicles that hear the voice of God that was prepared for us, and we put in man-made things. So we listen to this prophet, we listen to that man, we listen to that man, and no longer do we listen to them for encouragement and listen to them for, for things that build us up and help to, to confirm what we're thinking and hearing and seeing. Uh, but we now listen to them as the cochlear implant into our ear, and now we have these eight or nine channels that we now can, the audiologist can tune in what you need to hear. And what I'm hurting with right now as I go around the nation, the word of the Lord is very rare. We have a lot of prophets, but if you listen to the prophecies, they are goofy, and they're, and, 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 and they're crazy, and they kind of got the same tone. Somebody's not seeing. And then one of the things is a prophet is, is not afraid to be wrong in people's ears and be right in in God's eyes. Because sometimes when you tell people stuff, they don't recognize what you're telling them, and they don't understand it, and they'll tell you that's not right. But five weeks down the road, it'll be exactly right, and then they'll find out that he was saying exactly what God said. So it's not instant gratification, and we want instant gratification, and we've lost that ability here. So, so Samuel, where was Samuel sleeping? He was given to the house by his mother to be raised in the house. He was sleeping, sleeping next to the altar. Go and read it. It's pretty cool. He was sleeping. That's why I have, I have two chapels, one, one outside the door of my house because you go outside of your habitation sometimes to hear from God, and I have a chapel inside my house, full-blown chapels, and I go to hear the voice of the Lord. But the best place I hear from the Lord sometime is while the news is on, and the Lord speaks to me about not the news, about something else, and I'm clicking and clacking it on my iPad, and I'm lost in a place and my wife starts talking to me and she thinks I'm deaf again because I'm zoomed. I'm zoned. I've went into that garden with him. I've enhanced the follicles. And do I use it all the time? No, I mess up. But he's waiting. He's waiting on you to pick a time to come to him by the altar. So Sam is by the altar. He's laying down by the altar. He hears his name. He goes to the old wicked Eli, who God has already said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess, mess you up. And he says to him, I heard this voice. Did you call me? I'm ready to do something. Three times we know the story. He did it. But the last time he said to him, what I'm going to tell you, don't wait for your name to be called. Go get next to the altar. Your name gets called after a series of altar times. And the altar is not at the church. And I have, like I say, I, because I don't have a regular building church, my own uh, office like Bishop Heron talked about, to go and shut the door. I don't have it anymore. I had to create that in my own uh, house. And people wonder in my neighborhood, what is all of that? Well, just go away. You know, I, I have to do what I got to do because I know what I need. What do you need? You may need to put a tent of meeting up in your backyard and go sleep in a tent. The Jews do it once a year. It wouldn't hurt you. Eli wouldn't confront the flagrant mess. His intestinal fortitude had fled him. He had no discernment. The lamp of God had not gone out yet. God was preparing another lamplighter. And right in this room, I'm going to give you the four to five minutes 
of what I could have given you, but you wouldn't have been close enough to hear. And for those of you who have heard on different places, let me give you a secret. 